The Subaru Baja was always designed to be a sport adventure vehicle. When it was finally released, there wasn't much adventure built into the car, so I took it upon myself to add those missing components. Over the course of a few years, this little Subaru was transformed into a capable off-road machine. As far as Subarus are concerned, even this did not make it the adventure vehicle that was promised. Now it's time for the Baja's next transformation, and into an overlanding rig. The first upgrade we're going to be making is with the rims and tires. These are a set of 16-inch Sparco Terras, wrapped in BF Goodrich KO2s. The KO2s are some of the toughest tires on the market because of the Kevlar weave inside the sidewall. The trade-off is that these tires are pretty heavy, but I'm sure with the new motor that it can handle the extra weight. The last set of all-terrain tires were getting a little low on tread, and were still on the original lightweight aluminum wheels. These Sparco rims are gravity cast in aluminum, meaning that they're more densely packed than the factory wheels, making them a lot tougher, but also a lot heavier. I'm excited to see how much a weight difference will make versus the trade-off in performance. Next, I will be upgrading the Baja's rear recovery point with the Kurt brand trailer hitch. From the factory, these vehicles were only equipped with shipping tie-down anchors, and these are not made to be pulled from. So, uh, somebody, not naming names, used this as a vehicle recovery point. Now we have to bend it back into shape. Okay, when it comes to overlanding, maximizing your usable space is very important. This guy right here is just your cheap roof basket from Walmart. So with our roof basket installed, we'll be able to throw a bunch of gear on top because uh, the inside is gonna be chock full of gear, the bed is gonna be chock full of gear, and we'll get into those later. But first, we're gonna go ahead and throw our roof basket back on. There we go. <laughs> and we can't forget about our spare tire. Now, for one, because we're going out of state, but for two, we're going on some off-road trails. It's not the ideal solution. Um, I know Subaru has problems with their uh, tread depth matching or damage to the all-wheel drive system, but at least with this all-terrain tire, uh, if we do have a blowout on the trail, at least this will help us get back on the road or get us to a shop to the point where we can get one of those tires fixed. Uh, these are the same size, uh, 215-65R16, um, so they're just slightly different, slight difference in tire depth, but like I said, this tire is only for emergencies. With our roof basket put on and our spare tire check, uh, let's go ahead and move to the back of the Baja so we can get some of our camping gear. We've got our front bumper with those steel shackles, and we've got that trailer hitch down below for rear vehicle recovery. Uh, tow rope from Rhino USA. Haven't even opened it yet. A three inch rope by 30 foot with a breakaway point of 31,000. So, real soft, real nice. There we go. It's a really nice rope. I think I paid $50 for this one too, a little over 50 bucks. So, uh, we just want to have some sort of vehicle recovery out there. I much, I think I would have rather had a Yankum rope or a kinetic energy rope, but this will serve its purpose just fine. Most likely, I will have to save George because I am a superior driver and also Subaru superiority. Enough said. And to finish off vehicle recovery, I've got some mini traction boards. Uh, I got the minis because they're easier to carry. They're not as long. Um, yes, it would probably be better to have the longer ones, but I don't see us being in any situation where we're going to need more than just the minis. Um, also, it can kind of double down as a platform. Roll the back tires, the front tires on this to level out during a campsite. If we do end up in one of those situations where we're going to need recovery boards, um, I'm glad I have them. These are also an Amazon special, uh, third-party special uh, for 50 bucks. 
And I was like, oh, everything I just bought was like 50 bucks a piece. <laughs> Driving on the trail is going to be rough. And the best way to make that a little bit more comfortable and also give you a little bit more traction uh, are tire deflators. So we have this Boulder Tools Pro Tire Deflator. Uh, what you see is what you get there with them. A really nice tire gauge. It consistently holds air with the release valve and of course your main tire deflators. Super simple. These are already preset, ready to rock and roll. So all you have to do is thread that onto your valve stem uh, and it's going to start deflating your tires. Uh, these are KO2s. They have Kevlar in them so I can actually deflate pretty far uh, without tire damage. I will probably only go to 18 PSI not to risk a de-beating but you know I'm still a rookie so uh, don't be mad if I'm saying something wrong. These seem like they're very high quality and their job is very simple. Uh, we are not an Amazon affiliate. Maybe that's something we'll look at down the road, but these were purchased on Amazon. Since we deflated our tires, now we have to inflate our tires. Uh, this is what I got. I'm not sure what George is going to use to inflate his tires. Also from Amazon, but this little air compressor was $55 and it can air up a tire in about one minute so give a little break i mean so air up two tires give it a little break and then air up your other two tires um i'm really going to be putting this thing to the test just in case we need to air up and air down multiple times so it's definitely going to get a full workout in uh once we're on our trip i'll let you guys know if it was worth the price paid for it it can go right into your battery that's what they recommend going right to the battery so you don't have any problems with power loss. And the nice thing is, because it's so compact, it will not take up any space, which is perfect for camping and overlanding. So that should be a wrap on off-road and vehicle recovery gear. Now let's go inside the car and start talking about overlanding gear. Here you can see I have my rear seat completely removed. Better yet, I never reinstalled it after doing the motor swap, so that's my guilty conscience. Anyways, uh, that rear seat takes out like four inches of vertical space and about two inches okay my measurements are horribly off in overlanding you need to take advantage of every little space that you can get uh, so having this rear seat removed is totally going to help uh, there's only going to be two people riding in this car on our road trip and uh, the overlanding that we're going to be doing out of state so i see no problem with leaving this seat out i think i had mentioned earlier that overlanding is an expensive hobby as such we are going to be sleeping in this simple tent it's just your average walmart four person tent i want to say it was about 50 bucks everything is 50 bucks if you can't tell no i think maybe it was like 30 dollars when we first wrote this trip up i was planning on sleeping inside the back of the baja um that did not work out so well um i was gonna make a modified extended bed so I can put my feet in it but um, changes happened so in that case uh, we're actually just gonna be staying in the tent and the more overlanding that we do we're definitely gonna upgrade it uh, simple tent is the way we're gonna do it for now sleeping on the ground is really gonna suck so both my significant other and I bought these <laughs> these little mattresses so I'm only gonna get mine out I'm not going to show you both, but there are two of these giant mattresses. And we ended up springing for these sweet memory foam mattresses. Mine has cooling gel in it. And they are some intense foam. These are twin mattresses. So we're going to have two twin mattresses in our tent. And that should totally make at least the sleeping aspect a lot more bearable. The nice thing is this mattress can unzip and it can be washed and it's got this textured plastic backing to help keep it clean but uh, this is one of the more expensive purchases that we have for this trip uh, we each spent about a hundred dollars or so if you have the money I highly recommend investing in a mattress other than that we have two of these giant uh, cargo containers full of camping gear any more stickers for mine though but inside is all of our small stuff. First aid kits, uh, shower. Well, a lot of the stuff you guys will see probably utilized on our trip. Little camp sinks for washing and drying dishes. 
These are nice little uh, eating utensils, little eating utensil sets. And we got camp pizza on the menu coming up. So watch us fail at that. So we have a camp table that George is probably gonna show you on his overland build. So I've got my tailgate and his camp table for our kitchen needs. We've got a lot of collapsible bowls and camping supplies too. Just a little cheap two burner grill. Uh, we have some frying pans, some other uh, cooking supplies to go along with that. Underneath uh, the whole grill is the little uh, propane attachment. So it'll be a nice little treat for you guys. We'll go over our, the camp meals we're gonna cook on this trip as well. So short, simple, cheap, very budget friendly overland gear. Next up is our water supply. Uh, look at that. We got six gallons of uh, cooking, cleaning, bathing water. So nice little water container. Fits back there. <clears throat> then we've got this guy right here, which actually has a little spigot on it. This is going to be seven gallons of drinking water that we'll be bringing with us. That fits right back there, just like that. It's amazing how much room the Subaru Baja can hold. Also up on our list, we have a couple jerry cans. Our goal is not to go back into town for anything. So in the event that we do need the extra fuel, We'll definitely have be prepared for that. To finish off the bed pieces, or maybe not, is eh, a really nice Yeti cooler. Uh, this was a very nice Yeti cooler that we are borrowing from some friends. Uh, shout out to friends, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, we don't really have the expenses to buy a nice cooler or even a fridge on this trip. So we will definitely adjust, uh, address that in the future. You can see, I think this Yeti cooler is rated to keep things cold for four days. That'll take care of our whole trip. So, uh, you can see that it has a nice amount of space in it. If I could open it, I got, oh yeah. <laughs> got nice little handles right there. It's got a good amount of space in it. So, overall, what we'll, might even keep all of our food in this thing. It seals real tight, so it keeps uh, all of the smells of food locked into that cooler and hopefully away from other animals that are wanting to come play with us. So I've got a couple of things left to show you guys yet. Uh, I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. It's Napa know-how and we're gonna be using it like this, if you know what I mean. So I also picked up a fire extinguisher roll bar mount. This one's really nice because it's quick release. All I have to do is pull this pin and the fire extinguisher comes free. The fact that I can grab this in less than 10 seconds and start spraying it, it's really appealing to me. So, little $25 roll bar kit uh, mounts to my Baja uh, sport bars. So, I think that in itself is worth 20 bucks. Okay, so there's one more thing that I wanna show you guys and I brought it up earlier. It's uh, an awning, but I'm basically going to make my own awning. I would love nothing more than to have, say, an Iron Man or one that I can mount on the side of my vehicle that you can just unzip and unpull, but those are pretty pricey too. And so the poles cost 20 bucks, the tarp cost 20 bucks, put in shipping and we got another 50 bucks. Just another 50 bucks for everything that is overlanding. So those and these little tarp poles that I got. Um, the nice thing about these little poles are uh, they're three-way adjustable, so they can extend out about 10 foot if need be, and make myself a little awning just in case it rains or to get some shade for when we're out and about overlanding. So uh, I'm assuming I'm gonna have that all set up by the time I'm done talking out of camera so you guys will see the finished product. I'll still have to play around with it a little bit, but I think this will suit our needs just fine. Um, yeah. Okay guys, that's gonna be a wrap on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely stick around if you guys wanna check out some overlanding videos, some road trip videos. Those are coming up in the future. We're gonna put some other Baja videos, Subaru videos, or off-road videos here and here for you guys to check out. But uh, 
that's all I got for you guys. So, we'll catch you in the next one. You know, what kind of shenanigans? <clears throat> that's a bug in my throat. Yep, I swallowed a bug.